Anyway. Hi guys, what's up? Been a long time. Um, I'm gonna tell you a story today. I'm gonna tell you a story about a friend of mine who we taught how to play Dungeons and Dragons. So, I met this person at an anime convention, and uh, we worked for the same booth at the thing, so we were both there, and we started talking about things. And they were like, oh, I've never played a tabletop game before. So I and the other person that were there who have had plenty of, of experience in tabletop games were like, we're going to teach you how to play. So for the whole convention, we were telling this person, like, okay, here's some of the tenets of playing D&D. You get to choose a race and a base class, and you get to customize your character this way and that, and you essentially take on the role of this character, and, you know, it's, it's an interesting game. It's, uh... It's like a, a, an exercise in psychology of oneself and the ability to play a character. So, and this person's like, okay, sure, chill, like, really cool, I want to get in on this. So they make, they make this choice that they want to be like, a, like a, an elf wizard. And that's fine and everything for people who, you know, kind of know how the game works, but, like, strictly speaking, of the base classes, bard and wizard are, like the most difficult ones to play, because they're also the squishiest and the ones with the most, like, rules-heavy stuff on them. Bards are hard to play because of the role-playing aspect, and wizards are hard to play because they'll get killed so easily. So anyway, she decides, okay, I want to play a an elf wizard. I was like, okay, whatever. We'll, we'll go ahead and do that. So, after the anime Los Angeles picnic, which happened just recently in Irvine, uh, we brought her back to my place, which is also Austin and Katie's place. And so Austin was the, like, tank for the party. He was playing a human fighter. And he had, like, a big two-handed greatsword and all that sort of stuff. Austin doesn't generally play that kind of character, uh, but it was good for him to, you know, give it a shot, and also we needed a tank. Katie was playing the halfling rogue character, and, like, Katie had only played D&D once or twice before, and it sucked because her GM was crap. So, you know, I figured, well, I mean, but uh, she's got some experience, so she kind of knew what she was doing. So we've got, you know, our, our tank, our, like, thief, and our ranged DPS, essentially. So the story starts off, and uh, these three are traveling with a caravan that's going from the south part of the kingdom way up to the north part of the kingdom, where these guys are then going to get off and try to go look for this mythical city where uh, there's ruins and there's treasure and all this other stuff. It was an easy plot hook to, to throw down, because this is a one-shot meant for the purpose of teaching this person how to play this game. Um, now, Austin goes first. So Austin's first action is to go up to one of the traders that's with them, who happens to be a gnome, who is selling apples. These big, like, yellow, golden yellow apples. Uh, and Austin was like, hey, I've been traveling with you guys for a while. I've been protecting your guys' asses. I think I deserve some recompense. And the gnome says, yeah, okay, I'll give you a discount on the apples. And he's like, I don't think you understand. And they roll dice, and Austin's uh, diplomacy check was higher than the gnome's... Uh, what was it? Gnome's... Bah? Sense motive check. So Austin's diplomacy check was higher than the gnome's sense motive check. And that just made it easy to just be like, Blah. Okay, and the gnome was like, good point! Six apples, here you go. And so Austin's character was like, yeah, totally, ah, and I've got five apples now. Relatively legitimate thing to start with. Katie's character goes next. She, being a halfling rogue, is like, I'm a fine stuff to steal. But she does it right, because she looks around and finds the things that are, like, gonna be easy to steal but also worth something. Like, for instance, the ring of keys that's tied to the belt of the caravan master. Where the caravan master and the secondary caravan master, the second in command or whatever, are sitting at this log next to the fire talking. And this little tiny halfling girl just manages to go up and pluck this stuff right off of his belt and go and find the lockbox that it's for. So, so far, two really good choices a role playing choice and a mechanics choice. And that's to give, you know, this person an example of the things that you should and shouldn't, can and can't do in the game first thing that this person says is, I set the gnome on fire. You do have burning hands. 
So, uh, her elf character walks around the corner, and speaks with the gnome for a second, and the gnome's like, would you like to buy some fine elven apples? They're enchanted, they're magical, because they're from the elf kingdom or whatever. Obviously bullshitting to try to get this girl to buy some apples. And she says, blah, 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 and sets the fucker on fire. So now this gnome is flaming, and there's, like, a bright flash of light from the fire, and the gnome starts screaming. So everyone is like, well, we better run around this corner and, and, uh, figure out what's going on. So all the characters, like, all the NPCs and junk run around this corner, and there's this flaming gnome and, uh, an elf wizard with smoking hands. And so the, in the immediate thought was, well, we got an assassin on our hands. Austin's character body checks the new person that heard this elf to the floor, and, like, pins her down, and the elf character's like, what? No, I get back up. And I was like, bruh, duh, bruh, duh. no, Austin's roll is twice as high as yours is, so you stay on the ground. So, um, we, we, we had a talk right there, which basically consisted of the following phrases. There are good choices, and there are bad choices. You seem to have made a poor choice. Remember that, because it's going to come back again. So, um, there's arguing, and the gnome gets put out, and that's all good and everything, but because of the fire that was on the gnome, and the gnome, like, getting burned and all that stuff, I, ra I reasoned, okay, random monster encounter time. Shump. Owl bears. So, three owl bears come tearing out the woods towards these guys. And one of the camp members gets completely eviscerated, no chance of saving this guy, Phoenix Downs ain't gonna work, this is Eris levels of dead. Uh, and everyone is like, oh, shit, uh, what do we do? And so everyone fights them, and the elders get killed, and all that sort of thing, that's what happens. And the captain of the, uh, the caravan is like, okay, um, we're gonna just take you to the city, and... After that, like, uh, you know, we've, we've got someone who's dead here, and they were part of our caravan, so I don't even want to deal with your shit, just get away from us. And so the three APCs are like, okay, well, whatever, we're getting to the town, which is where we're going to get provisions and food and all that shit anyway. So they get into the town, right? And uh, they you know, go to the, the pub like you do, because it's where adventurers go. And um, the the elf character, the new person, seems to be one of those people that does stuff for the lulls. So he starts causing trouble and uh, like shit talking and and you know poison, trying to poison the the humans' drinks and that sort of thing. And like it's just a big issue. So the next day, you know, the next morning after all this stuff has happened, um, all, all the characters are down in the, the bit where you're eating stuff, the bar, uh, and the, the maid is, like, cooking up eggs or some stuff. Sausages, that's what it was. It was bison sausages, I decided, on the spot. Because, why not? So you're just cooking these, these sausages up, and uh, she... No, that's what it was. So, they, they do some stuff in the town, and they get a quest lead, uh, which is to go up into the forest and find out why the shipments coming from this one, like, elf town haven't been coming in for, like, a month. So all good stuff. So they go out to get, like, you know, weapons and provisions and stuff. They're supposed to leave the next day. The next morning, uh, the elf says, I'm gonna poison the human guy's food. The barkeep sees it happening, calls the constabulary. The constabulary grab the elf, smash her head into a bar, and then arrest her. So she gets put in the stocks. Uh, it doubly so because, you know, she's not in the elf kingdom anymore, but she's an elf, so she might be an elf spy or some shit. So um, she's sitting over there in the stocks. And the, the two other PCs are like, do we really have to... We really have to save her. She's been nothing but trouble. She's been causing so much trouble. We could just go do this whole thing ourselves and get all of the rewards ourselves, and it would be amazing. But they decide, okay, well, we'll we'll save her. Um, probably because they were teaching, we were teaching her how to play the game, but also because it's like, well, we kind of do want a magician. So um, Austin's character creates a distraction, breaks her out of the stocks, picks her up, throws her over his shoulder, and is going to escape. And she's like, no, put me down. It starts like, you know, beating him. 
about the head with her hands and that kind of thing, and he just goes, fine, fuck it, and sticks her back in the stocks and leaves for an hour. Meanwhile, the thief is just like, ma, perfect examples of time to steal shit. So, basically, like, oh man, Katie plays a really good halfling rogue because she steals everything and collects it, which is great. But anyway, so they put her back in the stocks and she complained and whinged and whined and yelled and all that sort of thing. But they came back an hour later and they broke her out. Um, and so that was all well and good and all that. They moved on to going up to the actual quest where they went through the forest. Um, they, they had to go up to the bottom of the forest and then go through the forest to get to the elf town. And they had some fights and the elf sort of just wasn't really... I mean, she was useful and everything, but she... She justified pretty much all of the stuff that she did by saying that her character was racist, or saying that her character hated such and forth, or that her character was an outcast, or some kind of thing like that. And I guess that's okay, because it's technically character development, so I do have to give her points for that. But... So they find some things in the forest, they finally get up to the, the town. And... A bunch of stuff happens. There's some dumb stuff and some not-so-dumb stuff. There's some insistence that you should use a magic circle of truth or a magic circle against evil uh, in order to try to dispel a fire trap that was set in runes on the ground, even though a set of runes can't be evil by themselves, and it's just the thing when you touch it, it bursts into flames, so they finally were like, okay, what about if we use dispel magic, and she was like, oh, okay, we'll finally use the dispel magic scroll that I've got, and it worked, and everyone was like, see, we told you so. Um, but, so they go up to this thing, they get this, the, the object of this one was, there was a big green gem that all of the elves in the town, who were ghosts at the time, uh, said, if you get this green gem, it'll bring us all back and we'll be eternally grateful and that sort of thing. As it turns out, the gem was a gem of three wishes. Two of the wishes had already been used by earlier bits in the plot before the characters got there. Um, and so they were supposed to use the last wish in the gem to restore everyone back from the astral plane where they'd been trapped. And so Austin's character is holding this gem, and the uh, elf character is like, blah, 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 we need to use it this way. Give me the gem, give me the gem, give me the gem. And Austin, not knowing what the thing is, he goes, God, I wish you'd just shut up. And I had to stop for a second and be like, did you just say that thing in character? Because that's important to, it's important to point out. And so it was like, okay, no, we didn't actually say it. So, you know, they finished the thing. And everyone is happy, and all the elves are back, and the evil sorcerer is dead, and the phase spiders are dead, and everything's great. Now, so now they've got this big gem, this big empty non-magical gem, that's worth something like 8,000 gold. Uh, the bounty that they were supposed to receive for this was like 30 gold each, with an extra 10 gold if they brought the shipments back or something like that. But... Um, so they got this hugely expensive gem. Now, on the way up there, they met one of my signature characters, uh, who is a, an item gambler. You can trade him items that you have for items that he's got, that he won't tell you what they do or what they are. And then uh, you might get good items, or you might get shitty items. Um, and so they met him on the way up there. They met him on the way back down again. And uh, so this, this elf takes this eight thousand gold piece gem, and he goes, kaplump, what will you give me for this? And the guy's like, ma, -ha -ha. so he gives her some stuff. And the other two characters are like, so that was supposed to be kind of ours, since we did a lot of the work as well, and you didn't really actually do that much to begin with, and you just gave away eight thousand gold for a deck of cards and an empty book. Now, the deck of cards was a deck of summoning, and the empty book was that one book where when you turn the page, there's a scroll on it, and you can use that scroll as many times as you want, but the certain second you turn a page, it's gone. That book whose name I don't remember, but in any case, it was that one. So, honestly, they made out like bandits for, for you know, s trading an 8,000 yen, or 8,000 yen, an 8,000 gold piece mundane gem for some high-level magic shit, but they didn't really know that, so they, they were just like, dude, 8,000 gold, and you threw it all the way. Fuck you. So, they're going back to the town to get their actual bounty, and the the two good, the, the two normal players, they're just like, so we can't bring this person back into the town with us. And she's like, why not? It's like, well, one, because you just broke out of the stocks, and everyone's going to recognize your face. 
and if we get caught with you, then we'll be counted as part of your accomplice group, etc., etc., it would be a bad thing. She's like, I could just use disguise self. And Katie's character goes, I have a better idea, and shackled and tied her to a tree in the forest while they went and got the bounty. Now, the, the speech that we gave her at the very beginning, there are good choices and there are bad choices, had to be repeated so many times during this, during this game. It was ridiculous. It was some kind of dumb. But at the very least, she's learned some of the mechanics of how to play Dungeons & Dragons. The next campaign that I run, probably not with her in it, um, will be a Call of Cthulhu campaign based very largely loosely around the SCP Foundation and the sci-fi series The Lost Room. So maybe there'll be some stories to tell about that. Um, yeah, so that's uh, my story about teaching this person how to play Dungeons and & Dragons and finding out that they were kind of an awful role player. So, yes, I'll see you guys next time. I'm making more videos. This entire week I've got off, and that's kind of great. I'll be at Anime Expo. If you guys want to uh, come and meet me at Anime Expo, just go to the Anime Los Angeles booth, where I will be working, and if I am not there, just ask for me, um, and I'll be around. I'll be cosplaying a bunch of stuff. Uh, I'll be cosplaying with Unlimited Cosplay Works again, which is great, because it's been so long since I've been with my home group. So, yeah, look forward to it. I'll see you guys there. I'll make videos while I'm there, but I don't know if I'll be able to upload them because of the internet and all that sort of stuff. See you guys later. Bye.